Welcome to the Call the Vet Show, the podcast that helps pet parents understand and optimize the health of their furry family so they can live the full and happy life you want for them. And here's your host, veterinarian Dr. Alex Avery. Hello, Kiora. Welcome to another episode of the Call the Vet Show. I'm delighted to be talking to you again this week. And this is an episode that I've been meaning to bring to you for quite some time and had a prompt um, in a previous episode, so number 130, um, with Dr. Sharice Roth, where we spoke briefly about representation within the veterinary profession and how actually, while this is important in its own right from an industry point of view, this can actually impact the willingness of pet parents to seek veterinary care for their pet. Um, That was episode number 130. This one is episode 135. And today I want to talk to you about accessibility of pet health information, pet care information as a whole. But before I get into that, if we've not met before, then my name is Dr. Alex Avery, veterinarian Dr. Alex, and this is the podcast for every pet parent who wants to know the best way to care for their pet, who wants to dive deep into the topics that that really matter uh, and want to know the steps that you can take to actually make a real difference to the well-being and the health of your furry family members. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you share this far and wide. If you do enjoy these episodes, if you're a frequent flyer, if you like, welcome back. And I'll be really interested to hear your thoughts on today's episode as well. You can find me on all of the the usual social platforms and at callthevet.org, which is where this podcast lives. If you you head to that, then you can check out all the back catalogue. You can get all of the show notes and the links that um, we speak about in every episode and dive deeper into some of the topics that we we've spoken about in the past after all we've got 134 other episodes for you to dive into if you've not checked them out already and now on with the show and I've actually recorded this episode uh, before. I've recorded it a few days ago, but I um, wasn't really very happy with it. I thought I was kind of rambling a little bit and, and not really being very, very clear in my thoughts or the message that I wanted to share. So um, this is take two. Uh, it's being published in a couple of days. So this is going to be the the second and final take with, with any luck. Um, And the reason that I wanted to take such good care of this episode is because uh, accessibility of information, of all information, and certainly pet care information, is is something that you can imagine is very close to my heart. Uh, I work in an area where I see a wide spectrum of people from all different walks of life, those that have uh, got plenty of resources at their disposal and those who are, are struggling in many ways. And my job and one of the the, the real joys in the work that I do in the veterinary clinic is is actually coming up with plans that, that work for, for everybody, no matter what their resources or their abilities or what they're able to do for their pet, finding something that is actually going to make a meaningful diff- a meaningful difference to the, the health and well-being of, of my patient. And that's something that I'm really very passionate about. But when it comes to the accessibility of pet care information as a whole, my journey into this really starts back um, five, well, more than five years ago, um, 10 years ago now personally, but our pet's health um, and the Call the Vet show and the YouTube channel and everything has been going for, for five years. And that started going back because my um, my son was, when he was born, he was actually born um, deaf. He had hearing aids from the age of four months old and he actually had cochlear implants at uh, four years of age. Now he's doing incredibly well. He's mainstream schooled. He's kind of right at the top of his class um, in all of his subjects. He gets stuck in with anything and everything and he certainly doesn't let his his deafness hold him back in, in any way. Um, so, you know, that's all well and good, but it certainly opened my eyes to a vastly underserved range of people. And that's not just people with um, hearing impairment, but it could be people who suffer with sight problems or um, mobility issues or whatever kind of um, disability or challenge that that many of us do face in one way, shape or form. And and so when I started Our Pets Health, um, and I actually had the time because when my son was born, we didn't want him in childcare kind of every day of the week uh, of the working week. And so I dropped my hours to a, a, to work a four day week. 
when he then went to school and when my daughter went to school, that gave me time, an extra day in the week where I could uh, devote myself to a separate project. And that's where Our Pets Health came into being. Um, But I was very mindful when I started producing content that I wanted content that was going to be accessible and available to to everybody, uh, no matter what challenges they face. So with with every video, there are subtitles. Now, it used to be at the start five years ago, the YouTube auto generated subtitles were terrible. So I would actually go through every video and correct the, the subtitles that were generated. Thankfully, they're much better now. And although they're not perfect, I can leave the AI machine to do its work and, and auto generate those those subtitles those captions for all of the audio pieces of content um, I wanted there to be a, a transcript and so there is a transcript produced for every podcast or there is a full comprehensive article written for every podcast that just uh, converts what I'm saying and what my interviews are into maybe a more legible piece of information but that's something that I feel very strongly about now those transcripts they cost anywhere from 10 to a hundred dollars sometimes to produce certainly if the quality of the audio um, or the accent of the speakers is a little bit challenging for the AI machine then I need to actually go and um, outsource that to a, a person to produce that transcription for me which is not a cheap uh, exercise but it's one that I feel very strongly about that the people who can't hear uh, should have access to the same information that's in these podcasts um, Equally, those who can't, uh, who uh, struggle to read or maybe understand the written word, maybe English isn't their first language um, and they prefer audio content, then the podcast is available. People prefer to to learn through watching and that's where the video content comes into play. So for me, this accessibility of the information that I'm producing is is really one of the key um, beliefs that I have with the whole our pets health infrastructure and i say that it sounds very grand like there's a whole team but actually it's just it's just me and i um i outsource the occasional job to to somebody else but really it's it's yeah it, it's me but by myself sitting in my office producing all of this content and that's all very well and good but it used to also be that the only way to get pet health information um was to either buy a textbook buy a veterinary textbook and try and study um, and go it alone or to actually go to your vet and tap into their education and their experience and their knowledge now there is just a wealth of information online which on the surface level is a good thing and some of the information is is very good very factually correct very detailed and very actionable but but unfortunately a lot is either only very oversimplified surface level information or it's actually factually incorrect or misleading the the problem with producing content online is that if nobody reads it if nobody watches it if nobody listens to it then there's no point in it being there and to get those eyeballs on that content unfortunately that leads to clickbaity content so that's um, titles that are maybe misleading or the content itself is over egged um, and has a certain angle that is maybe more shocking and I'll come to that in a little bit Um, and that more shocking content may not be completely factually correct it may be missing out key pieces of information to actually reflect the true situation um, that's out there but that more shocking piece of information is going to have more eyeballs so it's going to sell more ads uh it's going to make the creator more money um and that then also is more likely to get shared and that information perpetuated through all of the social platforms that it's shared on um by the discussions that it generates um and so this may be factually incorrect or information that's not the whole story actually then becomes the the norm now, it may even be produced by artificial intelligence. So I spoke about how the transcriptions um, on YouTube are uh, produced by AI, and certainly some of the transcripts that I um, have for my content is produced by AI, where it's taking the audio um, and converting that to the written word. But there are also artificial intelligence writers out there and they are becoming um, more human-like in their terms and they can produce content that is actually very difficult to be able to spot that it is written by a machine it's produced by a machine and not by a person with 
experience in that field. So an example is actually I have an AI writing machine that I use to help me come up with um, titles um, and some descriptions and things. It just helps um, helps me with some ideas. Now, I don't actually use it very much at all, but it's it's a, a tool that I, I have at my disposal. And I asked this machine to come up with a couple of paragraphs on the topic of are dog vaccines safe? Um, and I asked it to create these paragraphs in a shocking tone and this is what it came up with are dog vaccines safe this is a question that pet owners across the globe are asking and with good reason recent research has shown that many of the ingredients in dog vaccinations can be extremely harmful to our beloved furry friends dogs may appear healthy after receiving a vaccine but it may not be long before they start displaying serious side effects like seizures vomiting and fatigue What's even more alarming is that many of these adverse reactions occur without warning. Pet owners often have little to no idea their beloved pup has been exposed to potentially dangerous substances. Even more worrying is the fact that some of these substances can even cause long-term damage or death if left untreated. In light of this shocking revelation, it's important for every pet owner to do their own research before taking their pup in for any vaccinations. So... Then I simply changed the tone request to educational. So I kept all of the other information the same, asking for a couple of paragraphs on the topic of are dog vaccines safe in an educational tone. And this is what the AI writer came up with. Are dog vaccines safe? Dog vaccines are one of the most important aspects in keeping your pet healthy and happy. Vaccinations help protect dogs from a variety of illnesses including some very serious diseases that can be fatal if left untreated. The safety of these vaccinations is something that all pet owners should consider before deciding to administer them. When discussing the safety of dog vaccinations, it's important to understand how they work. Vaccines contain antigens that trigger an immune response when introduced into the body. This response helps create antibodies in the animal system which can provide protection against future exposure to certain illnesses or disease-causing agents. As with any medical procedure, there may be certain risks associated with vaccine administration. However, modern vaccines are typically considered safe and effective for dogs when administered properly by a veterinarian or qualified veterinary technician. So two very different sentiments were produced, but I'd actually challenge you to spot that they weren't written by a person and potentially by a person with some training or with some um, knowledge of um, of dog health and vaccinations. Um, also, all of the voices were AI produced as well. Uh, and, you know, I bet that more shocking content would attract more likes and comments and ultimately make more money for the creator so that they can then um, produce more content like this. And and that affects snowballs. So you can get some very popular um, platforms, maybe some very popular YouTube channels, because ultimately um, the the tool that I use to produce the um, the voices uh, generates a, a video for me as well, using just taking clips of different dogs and, and things like that. If that gets shared on TikTok or um, Instagram or YouTube, then you know that's going to earn more money, and you're going to get some quite potentially big channels that seem very popular, and and that popularity might lead you to believe that uh, the 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 quality of information is is good and reliable, but it can be incredibly misleading. And so, you know, this kind of leads me to what is the whole point of this episode, if you like. Vets may no longer be the gatekeepers of knowledge. You don't have to go to your vet to learn about how to best care for your pet, to learn more information about certain conditions that they may be suffering from. But it's never been more important, in my opinion, for the veterinarian's voice to be heard you know producing online content like i do it takes up a lot of time what i thought might take me a few hours you know a week in the in the morning when my kids are at school um takes me most evenings um throughout the week certainly that wednesday when i'm not working um, and some weekends as well it takes a lot of time and and to be honest most the majority of vets um you know or technicians or nurses people with knowledge and first-hand experience and good quality education they just don't have that time on that motivation um to jump online you know I, I also deal with a lot of hate and negative comments online and and you know sometimes that does make me think well why do i bother why do i leave myself exposed um to that but you know, I've developed a bit of a, a thick skin. Um, 
you know, this producing the information has also cost me an awful lot of money, but it's something that I feel um, very passionate about. And if you think that I'm generating a lot of money from from this, then um, yeah, that's certainly not yet the case. Um, it would be great if it was, but um, you know, this is a, a passion of mine and it's something that I feel is very important. And so I guess the overall lesson, and this is a lesson with anything that we're finding online, any piece of information, even sometimes in the flesh that we are, are we are being exposed to is to be very careful when it comes to believing what you're reading, what you're watching, what you're listening to, um, really checking what the expertise of that person is, what their education is, and also what the consensus of that field is. Because sure, it may be the the, the case that there are, um, you know, uncertainties in a particular topic. But if, if, everybody in a particular field is saying one thing and there are a couple of lone voices saying something completely completely the opposite then the chances are is that those few voices are not not correct and not telling the whole story helping your pet live the happy healthy life they deserve so that's really it for for this episode. I'd love to hear what you think. You can find me on all the socials and I'd love to hear your views in a comment or a DM. Um also, if you believe in what I'm doing, if you believe in my um, mission to improve the accessibility of high quality evidence based pet health information, then I'd really appreciate you considering um, becoming a patron to the podcast and to Our Pets Health as a whole. Uh, you can head over to ourpetshealth.com slash patron. Um, there's also a link down in the um, description and the notes to this podcast episode. Um, I'd encourage you to check out one of my courses. There's a few more courses that are going to be coming online um, as of next year where I dive deep into particular topics um, to really lead you through the actionable steps that you could take. So keep an eye out for that. Um, Or even simply sharing this episode or another episode with your friends and family on social media to help improve the reach of the content to get more eyeballs on, on my content would be greatly appreciated. And with all that in mind, I... I'm looking forward to talking to you in the next episode of The Call the Vet Show. But until then, I'm veterinarian Dr. Alex, and this is The Call the Vet Show because they're family. That's it for this episode of The Call the Vet Show. Be sure to visit callthevet.org to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. We'll see you next time.